Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and to another installment of the Coach Carter College Troops 2K Legacy Mode here on College Sports Revive. In the last episode, we recap this hot streak that the UT Martin Skyhawks have found themselves on, winning six out of the last eight games and standing at nine and ten right now in conference play. Right now, they're fighting for a chance of that eighth seed. Only the top eight teams make it to the conference playoffs to ultimately have a shot at the prize of having a chance to play in March Madness, but still some late season drama to take care of. We sit at 9 and 10, and our last game on the schedule is against the 8 and 11 Murray State Racers. We won our first matchup this year against them, but if we lose today, we'll stand at 1 and 1 for this season. And that will result in a tiebreaker game against these guys once again to decide who gets that 8th and final spot to have a chance at the conference playoffs and ultimately a shot at the bigger prize, March Madness. So join me and our UT Martin Skyhawks as they make the 57 minute bus ride over to Murray, Kentucky for one last pivotal game here to ultimately decide our season. Out of the gate, offense is a little bit sluggish as Wyatt Stallworth tries a three. Him missing has kind of been the way this game has started in the early goings. Teams trading baskets, but look at the senior power forward from Athens, Georgia. Six foot nine, Shaquille Hammond playing in his last regular season college game, taking and making his first shot attempt. But Murray State would respond with a run, and that was all fueled by that man right there, junior forward Johannes Monroe with early six points. Tied at 14 here as off the catch. David Giles, another guy who's been playing so well late in the season as he hits another three as there is his first bucket of the night. And Giles' three-point bomb seemed to create some space for the Skyhawks as they blossom out to a seven-point lead. But once again, Johannes Monroe not going away without a fight. A quick five assists for the point guard of Murray State, Dimitri Woodson. And now here's Paul Roller rolling to the basket, showing off his a vertical a little bit there, getting it around the outstretched arms of three Skyhawk defenders. Paul Roller, one of the higher flyers in the conference despite only standing at 6-1. Now here we come on the break. Good job by Dwight Easley beating the press, setting up the offense, getting the ball in the hands of the man that everybody has their eyes on. Marcus Saunders had a cool 29 points last game against Eastern Kentucky off the bench and the biggest win of the season so far for the Skyhawks. But here we go, we're relinquishing second chance points as Dwight Easy tries it from half court. Has a little ambitious there. Easley's done a great job of closing out halves with his jump shooting. He seems to always make it when the shot clock turns on. But a 39, 35, 29, excuse me, lead for the UT Martin Skyhawks heading into the intermission. The numbers are even, but the thing that's setting them apart is the six made three pointers by the Skyhawks, as that's kind of been their MO late in the season. But here comes the Murray State Racers, a lot of athletes on this team, Johannes Monroe collecting another basket in transition. And the thing, like I just talked about, the three-point shooting coming in bunches for the Skyhawks as David Giles in his possession, the ball works around, he finds himself some space in the corner, knocks that one down as that ball pretty much touched every part of the rim before it went down. But here's Floyd Zubek with a big rebound, Giles tries it again, this one he leaves a little short. Right now it's a three-point lead with 11 and some change to go. Johannes Monroe, risky pass, but he finds a lane. This Murray State Racer team full of athletes. Their offense has looked a little stagnant in the half court, but they've been really playing their best basketball on the offensive side when they get out in transition as they continue to do here. I touched on it before. Paul Roller has some bunnies, one of the more higher flyers in the Ohio Valley Conference as he displays it on the fast break there as Murray State has their first lead since the first half of action. Now here's Dimitri Woodson driving, no good, but Carlos Thompson with a big offensive rebound here. Both sides, both teams are intimately acquainted of just what's at stake here tonight. And that shows of just how hard of a game both these teams are playing tonight. Murray State's lead is 5 with 3.50 left to go. Anton Cleveland, the top scorer for the Racers, getting it done here, going to the basket as he's got 9 on the night. Marcus Saunders checks in as the UT Martin Skyhawks need a spark. Ballard out to Saunders going one-on-one -on -one against one two three guys such a tough layoff in traffic as Saunders is in double figures once again off the bench he's got 11 here's Demetri Woodson trying it from the top of the key unlucky bounce UT Martin the clock is against them they got to push the ball Joey Ballard in the post he has the height mismatch on Woodson but instead he finds Saunders freshman to freshman connection for a huge shot Saunders again hitting from beyond the arc as he continues his hot shooting stroke 
to end this regular season. Murray State at the charity stripe, that's a big missed free throw from Anton Cleveland as that could have made it a two possession game. But here come the UT Martin Skyhawks. Saunders with another quick trigger finger. Another knockdown three. This one coming from the corner, 17 for the freshman. Hammond with a lot of defensive pressure on him makes the smart play going down to Joey Ballard of all people hitting the go-ahead bucket from inside the paint. But Murray State would answer back quickly as you know the guy has been doing most of the damage tonight. Johannes Monroe hits another one. Most of his damage has come inside the paint, but that one he knocks down from just inside the three-point arc. And here comes Shaquille Hammond. This will spark a pretty crazy series of events as the senior is out of control. Turns it over. Here come the racers. Inside to the forward, Carlos Thompson tries a fadeaway go-ahead bucket attempt off the mark, which would lead to the UT Martin Skyhawks trying to take the lead here with 35 left to go. No good by Hammond, but a huge rebound by Floyd Zubek. That'll turn the shot clock off and the UT Martin Skyhawks have one more try to get this done in regulation. Saunders with five seconds left to go, hands it off to Hammond, but it's just off the mark as Carlos Thompson collects his 10th rebound of the ball game off the miss. Tied up at 56, we're going to an overtime game. 325 up to play, Hammond tries to isolate, wanting some space, he just is off the mark from the baseline. Thompson with a dozen rebounds as Paul Roller lifting off once again. Now a poster on Dwight, easily as the freshman didn't know what hit him. 61-60 now, UT Martin still holds a slim lead. But how about Corey Barnes, the Murray State point guard, who's quietly hit some big shots tonight. There's 11 for him on the game as UT Martin takes control of the offense again. Hammond continues a tough overtime period, but even a tougher game has been for Dwight Easley. But look at him stepping in, taking a huge charge, stopping the fast break, leading to an offensive foul. Dwight Easley, he has been 0 of 7 from the floor tonight, held scoreless the entire game, including overtime. But he comes in clutch with a huge defensive play. But here comes Anton Cleveland just leaving the layup short. A huge defensive stop manned by Joey Ballard as the Skyhawks will have one last chance to save the season. Dwight Easley, who has had an awful game, such a forgettable night, but the freshman stays resilient as he takes it to the Murray State defense, drawing a foul as Dwight Easley steps to the line for two of his biggest free throw shots of his young career. The first one is up, and it just rattles in. The first free throw is always the hardest in these situations. Especially for a guy who hasn't been the he hasn't been to the free throw site tonight and has missed all seven of his attempts from the field. He's got one more though. He's not done yet. The second one is good as gold, and it is not up at 63. One last stop is needed to try to save the season. Dimitri Woodson goes inside to Carlos Thompson. He kicks it out. White Stallworth gets his shot rejected as Shaquille Hammond had a little bit of frustration behind that block, I'm sure, as his offense has been almost zero here in the overtime period but a big block there great defensive possessions to close out the overtime leading to Dwight Easley finally getting his first uh, field goal to drop here comes the racers offense cannot tie it up David Giles with the rebound starting the break Dwight Easley taking his man one-on-one -on -one, hands it off to Giles big shot from way beyond the arc as Easley not a good day shooting but seven assists for the freshman and Dwight on this possession continues to find his teammates Shaquille Hammond, his head legs are a little tired, the shot was a little short, but it rolled in with the friendly shooter's touch, 16 points for Shaquille Hammond, and that shot would propel the UT Martin Skyhawks forward to the biggest win of Coach Carter's young college coaching career so far. What a memorable game, everybody doing their part, 13 rebounds for Floyd Zubek. 19 from Giles, 16 from Hammond, Bowed with a couple huge defensive stops, 19 off the bench from Saunders. It was a great day for everybody, and despite having Ohio Valley Conference's worst defense, we've allowed the most points per game this season throughout the entire conference. We had a huge couple of defensive stops there in the overtime period, leading to UT Martin only giving up four points in the second overtime period. A quick look at the final standings as UT Martin finishes 500 in Ohio Valley Conference play. As with this win, they also jump Moorhead State and secure the seventh seed here in the postseason conference tournament. As our first matchup is against the Austin P Governors. As we have lost both matchups to them this year, but they're not unbeatable. Both times we faced them, it was pretty early on in conference play. And as you can see, both of our matchups coming in early January, both losses. But this team, like I said, they are beatable. 
most of their scoring will come from six foot five forward Caleb Chambers, who actually plays center for them. With Chambers starting at the five, standing with that stature, that could easily mask one of our worst qualities as a team, and that's defensive rebounding. So we'll see. I think we match up pretty well against these guys, and it seems like the UT Martin Skyhawk players feel the same. Javid Giles, nice backdoor cut as Easy finds him for his second assist of the ball game already. Off to a pretty good start. Shaquille Hammond at the free throw stripe hits one there. A 13-6 run for your Skyhawks as they would not be done there. Tipped by Ballard, punched in by Hammond as he is coming out hungry. A great inbounds play ran here as they forget about the inbounder. Shaquille Hammond rolls to the corner as he does not want to go home early as he's making it clear. He already has 10 points. Shaq Hammond, he's the lone senior on this team and he knows the next game that he loses, that'll mark the end of his college career. But a guy that's doing most of the damage early for Austin P is Rodney Jarrells, the two guard. As Caleb Chambers is not getting it done, he's had a rough first half. Rodney Jarrells takes it again, but this one's pinned off the backboard. Hammond is making his presence felt on both sides of the ball. Saunders to Giles, who hits another three. Giles now joins Hammond as the only two players on the floor to break into the 10 point bracket. The lead is now three. UT Martin broke into the 40 point threshold in the first half, but Rodney Jarrells is not done. He's not quitting as he's got 12 on the ball game. But here comes Cortland Daniel with one of the most impressive layups we've seen all season as the 6'5 forward showing off his acrobatic nature there. Now a 13 point lead for the Skyhawks. Easily another tough game in this one despite the success as a team as here comes Alan Ratliff, the backup point guard, getting it done on the break for his first mark in the box score tonight. Austin P. still a tough team, one of the better offenses in the league, but they're getting shut down by this UT Martin defense. David Giles with a beautiful dish inside. Gene Schofield. David Giles with his first assist and had some fireworks beyond it. Now an 11 point game with 445. Time running out for Austin P. But here comes Alan Ratliff with another big basket. With Caleb Chambers not getting it done, they gotta look to other guys as Ratliff is only averaging 1.9 points per game on the season, but he's got two big baskets here in the second half. But an even bigger basket than that is Marcus Saunders. Another solid game for the freshman. Once again, surprise, surprise in double figures as he finishes the game with 11. And the final score would be a difference by 11, 66 to 55, UT Martin. Never in doubt tonight for our Skyhawks. The Skyhawks, the seventh seed here in the tournament, but not playing like it tonight. Coach Carter gets his first postseason victory here in his college coaching career as his UT Martin Skyhawks looking like a well-oiled machine going into the second half, playing the Samford Bulldogs, another team that we are 0-2 against this season. And a team that's pretty unknown as I have not played them on camera this season. And... These guys, they play an old school brand of basketball. They beat Eastern Illinois as they held them to under 40% shooting. And the guys we gotta watch out for are Joey Metcalf and Trevor Grandieri. They lead the way for Sanford and both had great games. And our previous matchup ended in a 49-40 loss, further cementing what I'm talking about. This old school brand of basketball that they play. They have the worst offense in the league, only are averaging around 51 points per game as a team, but that's all in their game plan. They are so methodical on offense, they really make the defenses work, and looking at their points per game relinquished on the season, they sit at number one by a pretty large margin in our league. So, we gotta continue to play our game, we gotta hit our shots when we're open, and Shaquille Hammond picks up right where he left off, taking and making the first field goal attempt for the Skyhawks tonight. Up by two in the early goings, Joey Woodside dishes it down to Gary Westbrook, Westbrook is third on the Sanford team, scoring behind Metcalf and Trevor Grangieri. And like I was saying, five minutes in and only 11 combined points on both sides. That is, until Metcalf hits a huge shot from the top of the key. When it's a guard doing the scoring, more often than not, it'll come from the lefty shooting stroke of Joey Metcalf. A 9-5 game now. UT Martin hitting a slump, obviously, as Dwight Easley drives the lane. Dishes it off to you know who, Marcus Saunders. Of course, he's the one that gets us out of our shooting slump here in the early goings as it continues on defense. Giles with a steal and addition side to the cutting Ballard. Great job filling the lane. 
just a great connection overall from both guys there and with only nine points this is the first time that UT Martin in a couple of weeks has faced offensive adversity like this it's been a while since we've seen a slump like this for our guys in the Navy but a nice shot by David Giles right there D. Cartwright comes in for some bench minutes in relief of Dwight Easley. He gets a jump shot to fall. A nice screen from the top of the key by Gene Schofield. UTM now holding a four-point lead with four and some change left to go. A great pass here by Woodside, finding Matt Payne going across the key with that bounce pass, putting it right in the shooter's pocket. We've seen Saunders play, display plenty of shooting in the last few games, but how about a nice pass here? He brings the ball out like he's going to reset, dishes it right into Gene Schofield. A very high IQ play from the young guard. The lead's four now. Only 32 combined points between the two clubs today, but here's Trevor Grangieri. Another nice pass here in the first half for Woodside as on the next possession they go back inside of Grangieri. We try to trap him underneath, he dishes it out to Theo McKee. The starting point guard gives it right back to Grangieri as he has been held scoreless all the way up to this point. But back-to-back -back buckets here for him as he tries to get out of a shooting slump of his own as well. Knotted up at 20 with only a minute and a half left to play as Samford takes their first lead of the night. A huge trifecta made by Samford's leading scorer as UT Martin calls timeout. And with five seconds left to go, you already know who we're trying to get it to. Dwight Easley, step back, but that one is tipped away from out of his hands. So, Easley unsuccessful again at the end of the first half, but we sit at a 23-22 game with the Sanford Bulldogs. This one's been really tough so far for us. They've made us feel really uncomfortable for the first time in what seems like forever. We just can't get our shots to fall. Shooting less than 40% as a team, as this one is an old school grinded out type game. Easily another tough shooting night, as two of out of the last three games have been really poor from him. David Giles is the one putting the TM on his back, as most of his damage has come from the free throw line, as he has almost half our points now. I have to point out, my Elgato started glitching really bad here in the second half. I won't be able to show many highlights as it became pretty much unwatchable at the end, but Trevor Grangieri, that's one thing you need to know, as he had a huge second half. Coach Carter made an effort to throw double teams every time he posted up as he might be the best post player in the league. Great job rotating over by Gene Schofield as he collects the block and the rebound, five off the bench for him today, as David Giles finds a lane as he continues his hot night. But unfortunately, this is where the Elgato got really buggy. Still a tie game here early on in the second half. Dwight Easley trying to get on the board. First seven attempts were misses, but a tough shot goes for him there as he finally breaks the dry spell. But unfortunately, the Elgato kept messing up as this is how the second half pretty much looked. As Samford continued to get stops at the end of the game, Hammond with a tough night, he couldn't get it going as this game ends in a 58-52 loss. Samford did a great job sticking to what they know. Easily with a really tough game. Hammond in his last college game ever only with seven points. David Giles had a great first half, but he was held to only four of 12 shooting in the second. Marcus Saunders, kind of a non-factor. He couldn't find his shot very much. Gene Schofield with a very intriguing game off the bench as he'll be one of the guys that hopefully develops a lot in the offseason. Joey Metcalf, 13 points for the leading scorer as Trevor Grangieri, like I said, Coach Carter wanted to bring double teams, but it just wasn't enough. He had a big second half of action, 15 and 12 for the senior center. Thank goodness we don't have to face him ever again. And finally, the team who will be representing the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament in the NCAA Tournament is the Tennessee State Tigers. And a big reason for that is Jasper Powell. I've talked about him quite a lot here at the end of the season. He had a broken wrist, he missed most of the regular season, but he comes back in full strength as he is, in my opinion, the best player in the conference. Only a junior, we're going to have to face him next year as well. 20 points in the title game as they destroy Eastern Kentucky and Samford on their way to the NCAAs. The proof is in the pudding just how much of an impact that Ken Carter has had coaching this team. 4-22 last year, he steps in as head coach, they win a postseason game and go 13-16. A season to be proud of, definitely, but looking into the offseason, we have some questions that need answers, like Shaquille Hammond, our lone senior graduating, the Ohio Valley Conference's leading scorer, who will step in and fill the huge shoes left behind by the 6'9 forward? Will it be a young gun like Marcus Saunders or Easley, or will it be a seasoned veteran like then-senior David Giles? 
That on top of we have to see our recruiting class, see who was crowned champion of the NCAA tournament, a lot of tasks to check off next time so join me as we go through our first offseason with Ken Carter. Stay tuned.